In this example, we want to find the arc length of the cadre. Actually, instead of arc length, just simply the length of the cadre. R equals 1 plus sine theta as theta goes from uh, 0 to 2 pi. Okay? This is an interesting problem uh, for two reasons. One, the integration technique. Two, the result is unexpected. Um, so, and, and, and there is a lesson to learn from the unexpected results. So, um, I know it's Friday, but try to follow me on this one. Okay, let's find out r squared and dr d theta squared. Okay, uh, so r squared is simply 1 plus sine theta squared or 1 plus 2 sine theta um, plus sine squared theta dr d theta squared um, dr d theta is the cosine so it's simply the cosine squared but I want it in terms of sine because everything else is sine so it will be 1 minus sine squared and in the process we lose the sine squared okay so if, if again, is if you add these two together, then at this point you have r squared plus dr d theta squared is two plus two sine theta. Okay, so the arc length now will be the integral from zero to two pi of the square root of 2 plus 2 sine theta d theta. And this is the first challenge. What do we do with this integrand? How we solve it? Because this is not something that uh, has a certain form that, uh, that we can use a trig substitution or tri we cannot use trigonometric technique here. It's not something we, have, we recognize, at least on the face of it. And then factor out and you have square root of 2, and inside you have 1 plus sine theta, but we are back into an, uh, a form square root of 1 plus sine theta for which we don't have a, recognized, a recognizable pattern or a recognizable technique. Yeah, we don't. If we had a sine square inside the radical, then we we can work with it. We can complete the square. We can do all sorts of things, but we don't. This is just uh, either two plus two sine theta or square root of two times square root of one plus sine theta. Doesn't do us any good here. All right, square root. Uh, we touched on it when we talked about integration technique. One of the things that may be helpful is to multiply and divide by the conjugate when you have a radical. Okay, uh, this is something we did touch on it, or actually more than touch, we did practice it even. So let's see what happens if I'll multiply and divide by the, radi the uh, conjugate of the radical. So, it will be the square root of 2 minus 2 sine theta, and I'll divide by the same thing. And then you have d theta right here. Okay, so now let's see what we gain by doing so. Integral 0 to 2 pi, and now... If you uh, multiply the integrands, you have 2 plus 2 sine theta times 2 minus 2 sine theta. You have a product of a 
conjugate pair. So you end up having the square root of 4 minus 4 sine squared theta over the radical uh, 2 minus 2 sine theta, d theta. One more step if you think about what you are looking at. Factor out the 4, you get 2. And then you have the square root of 1 minus sine squared. Well, that would be the square root of cosine squared or simply the cosine. I'll put the d theta on top for reason that become clear on the next page. Okay, so this is what we have at this point. Now, at this point, you should be able to recognize uh, the next step, I hope. So look at it, think for a second, and come up with a suggestion as far as how you... Uh, what should be the next step? Let me rewrite it here. The integral 0 to 2 pi, 2 cosine theta, d theta, that's a hint by itself, over the square root of 2 minus 2 sine theta. Okay? So, I gave you a hint here. What would be the next step? Yusuf. All right. That's correct. Yusuf, what's you? I'm sorry? No. Modified. Exactly. Because what happens is when we take the derivative, we lose the 2. Okay? So the derivative will be... Um, the u will be negative 2 cosine theta d theta. Folks, we do have 2 cosine theta d theta. So, L now will be the integral from, instead of 0 to 2 pi, since the new variable is, is u, we go from u1 to u2. We'll deal with the boundaries later on. Okay? And now, 2 cosine theta d theta is negative du. So we have a negative du on top, and here we have the square root of u. I think we, we know how to deal with, the, with this integral. Okay? Yank out the 2 up front. So we have negative integral from u1 to u2. Uh, 1 over square root of u, I'll write it as u to the negative 1 half du. And the result will be what? 2u to the 1 half, or 2 square root of u. So it would be negative 2 square root of u evaluated from u1 to u2. Okay? Again, this is u to the 1 half. You take the derivative, you get 1 half times u to the negative negative 1 half multiplied by 2, you're back in, in there. All right? Okay, now let's go bring back theta. Okay, u equal uh, 2 minus 2 sine theta, so it will be now negative 2 times the square root of 2 minus 2 sine theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Try to evaluate it and tell me what you come up with. Hmm. That's what I came up with. What the heck? How can it be? I mean, I know that the card unit has a length other than zero. So what do you think the problem? Okay, we start right here. This is 
theta equals zero. We go up here. This is theta equals pi over two. We go up here. This is theta equals pi. We go and we have these two, right? So the problem is, let's let's mark it. Let's go. This is ah, this is theta equals zero, and this is also theta equals two pi. Okay, this is theta equals pi over two. This is theta equals pi. Okay, and this is theta equal 3 pi over 2. This thing has a symmetry about the ver a vertical symmetry. Whenever you have a vertical symmetry, when you integrate, you end up having a zero because of the symmetry. This side will nullify the other side, or rather the left side will nullify the right side. The boundaries. Uh, Josh, you're absolutely correct. What he said is we need to reset the boundaries. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and reset the boundaries. I'll go from here. Remember, this is the direction, right? We go like that. So I'll go, I'll take this path. And this path is the same as 3 pi over 2 will be the same as negative pi over 2. Remember, I need to stay in the same direction. I'll, instead of starting at theta equals 0, I'll start right at negative pi over 2, and I'll end up at pi over 2. So we need to reset the boundaries and multiply the result. Okay? So, note. We, uh, the cardioid, symmetry is about the vertical axis. This is type three symmetry. If you if you look at back at your notes, I gave you three types of symmetries. This is awesome. This is the type three symmetry. Uh, actually, I need to. I'm gonna remove this end of parentheses. Let me. Uh, somebody asked me, how do we recognize type three this symmetry without uh, without sketching where r of theta equals r of pi minus theta. Okay? Uh, therefore, the uh, left side nullify, nullifies the right side or the, ri the right half. Let me change the Instead of side, I'll write half. So in this case, we'll calculate only half of the uh, length from negative pi for negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 okay so l will be the integral from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 of the square root of where we started, we started the square root of uh, 2 plus 2 sine theta, right?
and now we jump into the result the result was negative 2 so we don't have to redo everything we already done the, in, the integral uh, all we need to do is adjust the boundaries so we'll adjust it to go from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 and actually we need to remember we multiply it by 2 so it will be 2 times so it will be uh, 2 times negative 2 okay so it will be negative 4 and now we do what we were supposed to do before so it will be 2 minus we look at pi over 2 right so we have 2 sine of pi over 2 is 2 is uh, is uh, 1 so we have 2 minus 2 times 1 which is 0 minus square root of 2 for negative pi over 2 the sign is negative 1 so we have 2 minus 2 times negative 1 so this is good result because now we are looking at a negative 4 this is 0 and this is minus square root of 4 and of course square root of 4 is 2 so we have negative 4 times negative 2 or 8 and this is the answer